So this video today is about one of the fundamental and foundational topics about simulation modeling, which is this multi-method framework that we need to have in order to do the best possible model, which means that we have all the different paradigms that exist and we combine them and we use them as our tool set in order to build any given model. But for this talk, we have Sohaila, which is one of the simulation engineers at Norjax. So let's get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, the topic that I'm going to discuss today is related to the issue of choosing the appropriate simulation method for your models. It's very common that modelers get stuck on one simulation method and just use the same method or paradigm for any case at hand. Now, this could happen for one of several reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, the modeler could just know this one specific simulation method, and so they try to formulate uh, any case using this method without going through the hassle of learning another simulation method, uh, maybe because uh, he or she uh, doesn't have time or probably because they uh, are too lazy to do it. Another reason could be that the modeler has a lot of experience in one specific simulation method, so they just prefer to use this method over the others because of this experience. In fact, in a study done by Balaband in 2015, uh, the author indicated that one of the reasons that could lead the modeler to choose one specific simulation method over the other is uh, uh, his or her modeler preference and skills. The author indicated specifically that the decision on which method to use in each case was a combination of the modeler preference and expected modeling effort, most likely related to proficiency and using a modeling method. Moreover, in another study done by Brailsford in 2014, uh, the, uh, the author mentioned that uh, one of the reasons could be that the software that the modeler is used to uh, using when uh, working with simulation is only specific for one simulation method. So the author said that it is usually quicker to use a tool with which you are familiar, even if you need to make occasional compromises on the model structure. And finally, one reason could be that uh, the modeler lacks the knowledge about uh, the potential of other simulation paradigms in providing better solutions for certain cases. So this modeler simply doesn't know that uh, other paradigms or other methods might, might make their lives much more easier when they are uh, uh, working on certain problems. So all these reasons are possible. And this is why we really need to talk about the importance of knowing all the simulation paradigms out there and about the power of mixing between them. So I'm going to start off by showing you a small example that demonstrates some of the important reasons for the benefits of knowing uh, all the simulation methods. Uh, and then I will discuss a few other reasons and I will tell you what the literature has to say about this specific topic. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of a model that I did using two simulation methods. The first is the discrete event simulation, and the second is agent-based simulation. Uh, now, the process I have here is uh, related to the potting of heat sinks. So heat sinks uh, have holes in them, and the process of potting uh, is compromised of filling these holes, and it is done uh, in two separate stages and after an initial stage and the final stage and after each stage there is a little process called curing and finally the product will be tested and if it passes uh, it will be done so as you can see here this is the DS model uh, this is just the whole model uh, it's uh, simple uh, straight to the point and compact and I actually didn't do any coding effort in this model uh, anything that I used or everything that I used is actually built in in these uh, blocks that I used in the process. 
and the aim of the model was to find the utilization of the workers actually uh, and uh, even this part was very easy because uh, there is a built-in function in, the, in any logic that helps to find the utilization of uh, the entities uh, if they belong to a resource pool. So that's uh, just about it regarding the DAS model. And now let's move to the agent-based one. So this is the agent-based model that I preferred. So as you can see here, uh, I have two agent populations, the heat sinks and the workers. So I'm going to show you the state charts of these uh, agents. The, this is the state chart of the heat sinks and this is the state chart of the workers. So these two agents have to communicate with each other. So this model uh, has a lot of uh, message sending and uh, we had to make up a few uh, functions uh, in order for uh, the agents to communicate to each other. Uh, so as you can see, just by looking at the state charts and the model in general, it is very obvious that the agent-based model uh, is a little bit more complicated than the case of the DAS, and it, it needs a little bit of uh, more uh, of a uh, coding effort. In fact, uh, it took me one hour to complete the DAS model, uh, and it took me two hours to complete the agent-based model, so it took me double the time to prepare the uh, agent-based simulation. Also, for the case of the agent-based model, uh, we don't have a built-in uh, function that we can use to directly find the utilization of the workers from the state chart, so uh, I had to make up uh, variables that uh, store time, uh, and uh, to use a certain formula that I made in order to find the utilization of the workers. So in addition to what Sohaila showed us here, I did also the system dynamics version of this model that you can see here, which looks like a mess. It's super difficult to do this, and in particular because it includes the resources that you use. I won't go into detail on how you complete this and how you implement resources in a system dynamics model, but compared to the other two methods, this might take you three or four times longer to finish and to validate. In order to validate these 3D models, we can use the worker's utilization using two or three workers, and we see that all the three models get the same results, even though in system dynamics, you can only use averages, while in discrete events and agent-based, you are free to use distributions. So as you can see from this example, the exact same problem can be done in uh, many different simulation methods, and we can even mix between them. Uh, actually, this issue is uh, discussed a lot in the literature. There are a lot of studies that compare between simulation methods. Uh, so, for example, this study uh, talks about the shift from the use of uh, system dynamics and DAS to the use of agent-based. So they conclude in the study that although this kind of shift is important, specifically for the cases where there are individualism related to the entities, uh, this doesn't mean that agent-based can be used uh, in all types of cases. So they indicate that for many applications, using agent-based will not make much sense because it will be less efficient, harder to develop, or simply not matching the nature of the problem. And this is exactly what I showed you in the example. Now, more recently, the issue of multi-method simulation is being discussed more in the literature, probably because it is becoming more popular and because the modelers are starting to, to learn more about its benefits. So I'm going to sum up a little bit uh, some of these benefits, uh, and uh, we're going to add in the description uh, some of the papers that uh, have discussed these issues uh, if you want to check them out. So why are multi-method simulations important for certain situations? Well, because hybrid models are more capable of depicting real systems with a much higher level of detail that single simulation modeling approaches can face significant challenges representing. So in other words, uh, different simulation methods for certain situations can complement 
each other. This means that for these cases, using just one method of simulation, we would be probably making invalid assumptions and oversimplifying some aspects of the project. And this would definitely lead to inaccurate results. So this is why uh, studies have proved that for certain situations, using multi-method simulation would definitely give better results. However, as with everything, there is a downside to using hybrid simulations. And this is uh, the fact that uh, this kind of, these kind of uh, simulations will need uh, a little bit of advanced uh, level of programming. So it would be a little difficult for a, uh, a beginner uh, to directly start working with uh, multi-method simulations. And also the validation of these kinds of models as well as the interpretation of the results uh, is a little bit uh, more complicated than uh, one method simulations. So our advice to you is to go out there and learn and be really good in every uh, simulation paradigm out there. Uh, the learning process uh, will definitely be a little bit tedious, uh, but on the long run, uh, you will see uh, great benefits uh, from this process. Okay, great, it was awesome. Another thing that is relevant when you have to deal with different paradigms is data. Sometimes it's more difficult to get data at an individual level when you want to do an agent-based model compared to a higher level data when you have to deal with a system dynamics model. This is something to consider. But no matter what, you should go out there, learn all the methods that exist and be able to combine them in a way that allows you to create the best possible model, always having a learning perspective. Okay, so that's it for now and see you on the next one.